Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'd like to get into specifics of setting up these practice uh, scripts or uh, practice routines. I've talked to you in previous videos about how important it is to get organized uh, with your practice sessions. Um, <clears throat> that can't be, uh, that really can't be overstated. Uh, the biggest problem that I have with people is they're all coming back to me in a lot of cases and saying, look, you know, I'm really having a hard time getting uh, practice time. You know, obviously they want to improve, but, you know, life takes over, kids, jobs, all that kind of stuff. So it's um, amply important to have a, an organized setup um, that when you are sitting down, whether it's for 20 minutes or 40 minutes, you know, the amount of time that you have is um, disciplined and um, very comprehensive on how what you're doing. Uh, in order to do that, um, you have to script out what you want to accomplish and um, how you want to go about doing it. I use Word documents. Uh, you can put it down on a notebook, you know, bullet points, whichever way you need to get it organized in your head. But when we look at uh, guitar playing, you know, there are, are categories that we want to address as far as improvement. And um, I always break that down into five groups. Everything that you do on the guitar is going to break down into five different categories. Uh, the first category is dexterity. And this will be you know, this will come in the way of physical drills, finger independence exercises, um, any kind of um, physical drill, you know, you know, a drill that involves alternate picking, um, hammer-ons, pull-offs, hook patterns, whatever. And, um, you know, I'll go through uh, a number of those um, in a routine you'll be directed to after you, uh, after you watch this. Um, so that would be anything that falls... Um, any kind of drill, speed drill, dexterity drill it is going to fall into that, you know, warm up improvement on our physical skills. Um, the next category would be lead guitar, i.e. scale work. This is anything that you're doing pertaining to your major scale, uh, your pentatonic scale, uh, your modes. Um, play alongs, you know, you have a, you know, a blues, uh, shuffle playing in the background, you're soloing over that. So anything that would pertain to lead guitar work, scales and play alongs would certainly fall into that category. Um, rhythm guitar would be the third category. This is strumming patterns, um, finger style patterns. Everything that you're going to be doing while you accompany a lead voice or a lead instrument, a lead, another, a lead guitar, the harmonies that you're doing underneath there, the chords that you're playing underneath there to support that. A saxophonist is playing a solo. What are you doing under, under that? So that's the third category would be rhythm studies, strumming exercises, finger style patterns, um, and we can get that category buttoned up. Uh, reading music is the next one. The last two that I'm going to talk to you about um, are usually skipped. Well, I shouldn't say usually, but I, let's just say the, the, the category five and category uh, four are not as popular. Uh, the third, fourth category is, is reading music. That's actually reading standard notation uh, without tablature. Um, you're at a, you know, a Christmas event. Someone puts cheap music in front of you and there's no tab now what um so reading music anything that pertains to reading standard notation memorizing the notes on each string of the guitar going through a songbook without tab would certainly fall into that category and then lastly uh category number five would be music theory this is understanding the science behind the music and understanding how something works makes you operate it better 
And um, so that's what we're looking for. We want to operate uh, on the guitar better. We want to operate our music better. So we want to understand what's happening. So that gets into book work, that gets into some reading and study. Um, people aren't crazy about that. So what I try to do uh, in my personal lessons and on, on the channel here is to, as we're going through a song, I try to inject some music theory. Hey, here's what you're doing. Here's, this is why it's happening. And I try to get that in as best I can. Now, some people get upset and I get, you know, the trolls. Uh, send comments, just shut up and show us, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get value, compounded value out of, okay, this, you know, this particular person wants to learn a song by Toto. So let's take this song and while I'm showing them the tune, I'll start talking about what's going on in the song and why. So as you're practicing a song that you want to add to your repertoire, you're also gaining some music theory knowledge. And um, that's always a good way to go about things. Um, get compounding practice. In other words, you're going through a song, but as you're going through the song, you're getting better at your pentatonic scale. As you're going through the song, you're getting better at understanding why that scale is there and why you're using it. So if we can take 15 minutes of practice and approach it in a way, in a, in a trifold way. We're learning the song. Uh, we're learning something about the song. This is the scale that's being used. Okay, here's a rhythmic pulse that's in the bridge that I have to, you know, that I have to deal with. So this is all ways that we can compound our practicing and get more out <coughs> shorter amount of time. So those are the categories for improvement. When we get into an actual guitar practicing script, <coughs> pardon me, that can be a routine that you set up. Uh, can be in a word document. It can, you know, however you want to set it up. Now I'm I'm showing you here a uh, a a sample. So what I'm calling my routine one uh, employs finger independence drills. Uh, but while I'm doing those finger independence drills, I'm saying the note out loud. This is an F. This is an F sharp. This is a G. Um, the reason why you don't want it to just be mechanical, where you're going through the notes and fretting. You want to go through the notes and actually be saying out loud F, F sharp, G, G sharp. So while you're practicing that dexterity improvement, you're also gaining knowledge of your fretboard. So, you know, this all requires us to be present cerebrally when we practice, not just going through the motions. Like, you have to be involved. You have to be thinking about what you're doing. Sometimes people get into that robotic thing. I know I do. You know, I find myself playing, and then all of a sudden I'm thinking about, hey, did I clean the lint trap out in the dryer? You know what I mean? And you find your mind wandering, and, I, and I, the discipline is to kind of you know, wrangle yourself back in and, and stay cerebrally present. You know, that's, that's going to get you more bang for your buck. You know, a cerebrally present individual practicing in a disciplined, organized way is going to get more out of 20 minutes than a guy practicing for an hour. And if you don't believe anything I say, believe that because it's the truth. Um, uh, the second part of routine one would be, um, I have stated here, a pentatonics position one and two. So this would fall into uh, this routine. Um, the pentatonic position one and two would fall into our lead guitar category. This is where I'm improving my position playing uh, by going over position one and two. Um, so I have an example here of a rhythmic study. Uh, in this rhythmic study, we're using a strumming pattern. I'm just using a generic song, Stand By Me by Benny King. It doesn't have to be that. Uh, you could put whatever you wanted there. Um, but what you're doing with this song is you're playing the strumming pattern. And then you're figuring out a way to play that song two different ways on the guitar. So you're playing G, E minor, 
uh, you know, the progression of the song, you're saying, okay, I'm going to play that here in open position. Now, what if I had to play these chords in another, in another position? And, um, so that's, you know, that's again, getting more out of it. Yes. You're getting your strumming pattern down and you're getting that rhythmic pulse going, but at the same time, you're forcing yourself to play the song in a secondary position of the guitar. And um, so again, that can be, that's a uh, stand, stand by me is just an example. You can put whatever you want in there when you devise these scripts on these personalized scripts. Um, the second part would be um, uh, in my example, I have a play along blues in A. So that's going to be an A shuffle being played in the background on a loop or some sort of play along that you find. And as that play along is going, you're practicing uh, soloing and creativity over you know your scales, be it a mixolydian scale or a pentatonic scale. And you can de you know, decide that as you go. Um, that would certainly fall into our lead guitar work, but at the same time would also fall into a rhythmic um, category as well because it's metered and we have to be cognizant of where one is and where the chord changes are coming uh, in the play along. So uh, that serves a couple purposes as well too. Uh, and lastly, I have finger style pattern um, number one. Uh, this can be a finger style pattern that you want to develop and get better at. Uh, so let's say it's the finger style pattern to Landslide by Fleetwood Mac, or it's a, you know, a finger style pat pattern that you picked up on a Chad Atkins tutorial. You know, anything that involves um, your right hand picking is um, certainly is going to fall into that category. So when we recap routine number one, we have our first uh, uh, bullet point would be finger independence drills and saying the notes out loudly as you uh, out loud as you play them. Um, category number two would be pentatonic position one and two in uh, in our uh, practice routine. The third one would be rhythmic studies. So that would be our strumming patterns. That would be um, any kind of uh, syncopated, you know, strumming pattern that I'm trying to get, get a better handle on. Um, and then play that chord progression two different ways. You know, you pick the song. In this example, as I said, we, I use Stand By Me. And just learning how to play that in two different areas of the guitar. Uh, our... Uh, Fourth step in this particular practice session would be play along blues in A. So for some period of time, I'm playing with a loop of a blues shuffle in A and then playing my scales over top of it. And uh, lastly, the uh, other skill that we're trying to button up in this particular practice session would be finger style pattern number one. And that could be whatever I assigned that, you know, Dust in the Wind, James Taylor, um, whatever the case may be. So uh, remember, as we're looking through um, the, your categories for improvements at the top of the page, you know, and then when we do our routines, we're looking for ways to include everything that we're doing into a specific category of improvement uh, that we want to achieve um, with the R now. And then the next question becomes, well, how, how much how, what should I do time wise? Well, that's up to you. You know, uh, in routine number one here, you could uh, say, I'm going to do five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, you know, five minutes on each one of these things. That leaves you with a 25 minute practice session. Um, you could do 10 minutes. Um, but the idea is to assign some a number in minutes to these bullet points and then go through this. Um, and this is uh, routine number one. Uh, in a perfect world, you guys would have multiple routines worked out. You could have, you know, unlimited amount of them, you know, and uh, planning, uh, planning them out ahead of time is, is really, really helpful. Um, so uh, as we go through this series, um, you can look up the tutorial practice routine number one after you listen to this and uh, we'll have a video that um, shows 
um, going through exactly these bullet points to practice routine number one. Keep picking.